Uh, and again, I really thank you all for joining us on the Temple Mount server, and especially thank you for joining us for the first episode of the Church of the Mount. Heavenly Father, God, I just want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for this opportunity to gather together in your name, God, to reflect on your word and on the scriptures, and to commune with you and the Holy Spirit and with one another uh, in a spirit of family, in a spirit of friendship, and in a spirit of uh, coming together, God, to meditate on you and on your will for us and uh, how we can be instruments of your will, God, in the world. So I pray you promise that where three or more gathered in your name, there you are also, God. So I pray that you will send the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will grant us discernment, discernment in what is said, discernment in what is heard and received, God, uh, discernment uh, in what you want us to understand and learn and know so that we can pursue the lives and the purposes that you intend for us, God, towards your greater glory and towards the advancement and furtherance of the kingdom of heaven, Lord. So I pray a blessing over the Temple Mount community. I pray a blessing, uh, your strong hand of blessing and protection and guidance over this community gathered in this room, in this server, and your strong hand of healing and protection on the families and friends uh, of everybody in this community, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. And if it's okay with you, I'd like to say one more prayer. As Jesus taught us, uh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, Thank you. Amen. If it's okay, uh, I'd like to start with a little bit of just scripture uh, and reflection on some Bible verses. Um, and basically, the Holy Spirit is guiding me to turn to the scripture to contemplate the words of counsel and the words of advice and the words of wisdom that the scripture can give to organizations and teams and groups of people uh, and churches such as this Church of the Mount, right? because indeed this is the first gathering of the Church of the Mount, and this will be happening every week, and hopefully many of you will choose to come, not just once, but on an ongoing basis, or at least come again. And so I want to pray again that the Holy Spirit will descend into this virtual community, and that whatever God intends or wishes to be accomplished by the Holy Spirit should be accomplished in this place without resistance, without any difficulty, and indeed that we would consciously receive that and consciously ask for that. So I was reading uh, about the concept in Catholic theology and theology in general of a mystery, right? And mystery, we think of it like a, a mystery novel, like a puzzler, like Sherlock Holmes, but it has a different meaning in religion. A mystery is divine knowledge that can only be uh, unfolded through God's act of revelation. It can't be puzzled out by the human being under any other circumstances. So you can't crack this code, you can't steal or achieve this on your own. But if God wills it, he can grant this wisdom, this knowledge, this mystery, this understanding. So I guess I'm praying that he says, if you lack wisdom, you know, pray for it. And God who gives all things uh, without malice, will will grant it on to you, specifically wisdom. So I want to pray for wisdom on behalf of myself and on behalf of the community, uh, because God's wisdom at the, the foundational stage of an organization will ensure that we can be those seeds that fall on fruitful soil, right? The parable where some seed falls on the rocky soil, it grows, and then it gets choked out, it doesn't flourish. Others falls on the, the asphalt or the hard soil, it never gets to grow at all. But some of it goes in the, fer the fertile and fruitful soil, and it produces a hundred hundredfold, right? And we can say through the round table, that's already happened, right? There's been an abundant harvest in terms of the community that was built, in terms of people that were led to Christ and the way that the scripture and the gospel was preached in that environment, as well as all the fruitful podcasts and conversations. And in a way, the Temple Mount is the flower that has grown out of that fruitful soil that was the round table. Uh, but a flower, in turn, must produce seeds, and those seeds, in turn, must produce more flowers. So, in that spirit, I want to turn to God, in the name of Jesus Christ, with faith, 
to unfold what guidance God might have and scripture might have for a, a young organization, possibly a young church like the, the church mount. So uh, from Hebrews, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day with the capital D approaching, right? And then it says second coming, but the day is talking about the great and terrible day of the Lord, the doomsday, right? The day in which the sun will not give its light and the moon will turn red and the stars will fall from the sky. And we've talked in the round table and in the sort of revelation and the prophecies um, and how those may or may not be fulfilled in our time. But we know that every day brings us closer to the day of the Lord. And as all these wars and rumors and war, uh, as we see with Ukraine and Taiwan right now, more than ever, closer than ever to big war, we must gather together. We must encourage each other and we must spur one another on towards love and good deeds. This is what we call family vibe, friendly, polite, and respectful, but we can see there's so much more than that, right? It's about really encouraging each other to do well and be well and live well. And we've all seen that happen on the round table again and again, where people counsel each other and help each other and encourage each other in difficult times. So I just want to make sure that we continue to bring that benevolent energy all the more so with us to this new server home. So... I won't go on terribly too long. I want to make sure other people have plenty of time as well to talk, but I do like to do a little bit of a Bible study part. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So this community, right, has shown its unity, right? Everybody moved together as one for common reasons, you know, bounded together by love and Connection, because indeed, although we're all individuals, we make up one body, you know, one community. And uh, in the same way, the church is not a specific branch or denomination or sect or building. The church is not, you know, Orthodox, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Baptist, or Anabaptist. The church is the body of Christ, unified by the Holy Spirit, one supernatural entity in many human bodies. All of those of us who are part of this, right, are in pursuance of the kingdom of heaven. We are like a hive mind of sorts, um, telepathically bounded together by the Holy Spirit in the pursuance of the kingdom of heaven. So we are unified through the Holy Spirit into one body. And in the same way, this community is one family, even though it's members all around the world. So we just want to be open to that that gestalt telepathic communion, right, that takes us beyond our individuality into this collectivity, which can be benevolent, right? Not, not some mindless mob, but actually something greater than the sum of its parts. So that kind of follows onto this one. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? So you, yourselves, all of us, our bodies are God's temple, right? And the Holy Spirit lives in us, but it also says lives in our midst. So it goes between us and about us and amongst us. It doesn't stay within you like a candle in a candle holder. It lives in you, but also moves between you and all the other people that you speak with in the Holy Spirit and in the church. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. The, the part I really like is we are co-workers in God's service, right? We are cooperating with God in the process of advancing the kingdom of heaven. And why did Jesus come? Of course, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life, but also to destroy the work of the devil. We've done podcasts about spiritual warfare. And uh, so also, I just want us to remember that we are co-workers in God's army as well uh, in fighting against these powers and principalities of darkness and also workers of his benevolent purpose, which is also to evangelize, to spread the good news, to encourage one another. So I'm only going to read a few more. I don't want to go on too long. So let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. We have a lot to be thankful for. It's been an amazing two years as a community. We've achieved an incredible amount. We've built an incredible community. We have hundreds of amazing podcasts that we've produced together with all the members being guests on the podcast and all the amazing content that we've gotten out and this new server that is a blessing as well, the way it's been set up so quickly and the people who work so hard to do that. 
and the bots and everything that we now have to enjoy that we can reflect on that and we can have peace in our hearts meaning that we have unity in our community and that there is already a true family here that can have peace and is called to peace and be thankful for that so i'm going to read just this last verse uh, let the message of christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms hymns and songs from the spirit singing to god with gratitude in your hearts and i guess i would say this verse where i'll close is a great description of what the church of camelot is and was and what the church of the mount is and will be we will let the message of Christ dwell among us richly as we teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in our hearts, and of course, praying and praying together. So that's, uh, I don't want to go on any longer than that, at least for now. Thank you for, for participating, or rather for attending. And uh, I just wanted to ask, does anybody want to request a prayer, perhaps, for themselves or a family member? Alternatively, does someone have perhaps a prayer that they might like to say or be willing to say? Yeah, I just wrote one in preparation, if you don't mind. Please. <clears throat> um, God, I thank you. Only by your grace am I privileged to be here today as one of infinite modes of your will. I pray in the name of Christ that all barricades of heart and mind be lifted now, not to ease our suffering, for it is but a drop in the bucket of what was born upon the cross, Golgotha, but rather that we may accept and act in accordance with your will, serving our fellow man in complete modesty and grace. Amen. Amen. That was a beautiful prayer. Uh, thank you very much. Amen. Yeah. Is there anyone else who uh, perhaps wanted to ask for a prayer for themselves or someone else who, who would just like to say a prayer or even sing a song or read a Bible verse, perhaps? Um, can people just please keep the people of Australia in your thoughts and prayers? Um, I know my family and certain members of my family are struggling in particular with the lockdowns and stuff. Um, it's really taking a toll on their mental health. And um, we just, I know if they're suffering and they've got family support, I can only imagine what it must be like for people who don't have even that level of family support. So we really, if anyone has the time to just, you know, throw in a prayer for Australia and all those, any other country that is dealing with really draconian lockdowns, please. please Absolutely. Think about what it would mean yeah. to me. Thank you. Heavenly Father God, uh, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, with faith, we pray uh, on behalf of the people of Australia, the inhabitants of the country of Australia, the country itself, uh, just so you'll keep your hand of guidance, of blessing, of protection, uh, of healing uh, upon them, and uh, give your encouraging spirit, God, uh, in this difficult time when people are struggling with uh, sickness, with uh, fear of both the virus and vaccine and mandates and impositions in their lives and interferences and every aspect of, of people's existence, God, we just pray that you will grant the peace that surpasses understanding the peace of Christ, uh, and that you'll keep strong in the hearts of the Australian people faith, uh, that they can be strong today and anticipate uh, a better tomorrow. By your grace, God, uh, with faith we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you very much for that. It means a lot. You're very welcome. Was there anyone else uh, by any chance who wanted to read a verse, say a prayer, or ask for a prayer? Um, thank you, then. Uh, I think I'll just say a few more things, if that's the case. Um, I'll read a few more verses while we're here.
from Jude. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching that you have learned. Keep away from them. And that, I think, is something important that we can always remember. And finally, I suppose I'd like to pray the special prayer that we've prayed so many times over the roundtable community and which has been answered so many times and which is both a prayer and a Bible verse. So I want to pray this over the Temple Mount community, over everybody in this chat room, over everybody in the server, and over everybody who might hear this podcast at a later time on YouTube or SoundCloud. No weapon forged against you shall prosper, and every tongue raised in accusation against you, you shall condemn. For righteousness is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. And so this is uh, protection uh, from two things, right? From violence and from being silenced through murder and through the assassination of the enemy, right? Because we know that Satan is called a murderer, right? A father of, uh, he says he's a murderer and the father of it, meaning the origin of murder, and a murderer from the beginning, right? So the first part of the verse says, no weapon forged against you shall prosper, meaning succeed. So the gun, the knife, uh, the garret, right? Just being silenced, right? You'll be protected from this. And then furthermore, what is the devil? He is a slanderer. He is the accuser. He is called a liar and father of lies. And it says that he did not abide in the truth. There is no truth in him, right? So he will always resort to slander and lies, false accusations, and bearing false witness. And that's why the second part of the verse says, Every tongue raised in accusation against you, you shall condemn. So you're therefore protected by this verse from murder and lies. And these are the two powers that the devil uses to kill the prophets and, and work against God's church and so forth. But in the Bible, it says the whole world will hate you and persecute you because of me, right? On my account, this is Jesus speaking, but not one hair on your head shall be harmed. Right, so you're being promised, not one hair on your head shall be harmed, no weapon forged against you shall prosper, and every time raised an accusation against you, you shall condemn, because righteousness is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. So the heritage of those who serve the Lord is righteousness, and righteousness is empowered by protection from slander and from violence, not in an ultimate sense. You won't become invincible. But for so long as you are in service to the Lord, you will be protected from these two things so that you can do what God purposes for you to do in the advancement of his kingdom. So you may end up dead in the end, but not until you have accomplished what God purposes for you to do. And so that's the protection that I want to pray over this community, over myself and over all of you, that you'll be protected from slander and lies and false accusations and false witness, from violence, from murder and from physical coercion, so that you can, in righteousness, advance the kingdom of heaven, right? By doing good works, by treating the least of these as you would try to treat Jesus Christ, you know, helping the poor, also engaging in spiritual warfare, right? And also perhaps uh, working against the concrete and tangible forces of evil in whatever ways that you're able to, with the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit, when Jesus returned to heaven, he said, I go now, but I do not leave you alone. I send you the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, to lead you on to all truth and all holiness and all righteousness. So ultimately, the Bible is there as a guidance for you. The church or your community is there as a, as a community for you. But it's the Holy Spirit that unifies the community, and it's the Holy Spirit that grants the discernment necessary to reveal the wisdom which is in the scriptures, right? Because the scriptures are alive, a living sword, right? Capable of separating bone and marrow and discerning the thoughts of the heart. So the Bible can read your thoughts and discern the thoughts of your heart. And so the Holy Spirit will allow us to reveal the living word. And so these are the prayers that I have for this community. 
This is what I believe God purposes for the Temple Mount, being an evolution of the community that he already built, right, through this community. By it and for it, right? And of course, this is not explicitly or exclusively a Christian community, but God can and will work through this community and bring about, as we've seen, all kinds of positive things that we can't necessarily predict or understand or even intend, but which he can accomplish. And so we want to explicitly say to God that we are willing to be part of whatever benevolent purpose he has in store. And we know that he does have some purpose in store because here we are, right? Here we are. There's a reason for it. We all know that. And it's up to us to find out what that is and be instruments and co-creators with God, as the verse said, co cooperators and partners with God's plan. And ultimately, what is God's plan? It is that, as Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Currently, that is not the case, right? We're in the period of time in which Satan has been cast down to earth, and it says, woe unto the earth and the seas, for Satan has come down to earth, and he is in great wrath because his time is short. But Jesus came to earth to destroy the works of the devil, and ultimately, God's kingdom will come, and his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we have the honor and the privilege of being part of that, being part of God's army, being part of the war that was and is and is to come, right? And we should become, as the Crusaders, who are the theme of the server, the Templars, who are the theme of the server, we should become holy warriors for God, empowered in spiritual warfare, which says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not physical, but mighty, even onto the pulling down of strongholds. So we're empowered with spiritual weapons, spiritual warfare, to fight this war, not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities of wickedness in the heavenly places. So I just want to thank all of you for being here. Many of you are Templars in name and in truth, right? So this is a little bit of understanding what that means, right? To be a holy warrior, pursuing not just a material cause or a political cause or an ideological cause, but a sacred cause, a holy cause, a divine cause, not on behalf of men, but on behalf of God. And I believe that that is where we must now find ourselves uh, in these latter days. So I don't want to go on any longer. Thank you so much for attending the first meeting of the Church of the Mount. Did anyone want to say anything, ask anything, pray anything before we close up finally? That being the case, I would just like to close as we opened with the Lord's Prayer. If anyone wants to say it uh, silently in their own hearts or close their mic and say it aloud, please do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the and endeavor. Amen. That concludes the inaugural first meeting of the Temple Mount, uh, Church of the Mount. Uh, it will be happening every day on Saturday, usually, uh, albeit that today was Sunday. And I hope you guys will attend again. Uh, like everything else, it'll be in the announcements channel, and the format will vary from time to time. But generally, there's some prayer, there's some Bible verses that are read, and some discussion about them. And sometimes we'll have a friend who likes to sing a hymn or something like that. And it's whatever we want it to be in a casual fellowship environment. But if you do come, you know, feel free to come equipped with verses that you've picked out or thought about that you'd like to share with people or prayers, you know, either your own written uh, beautifully as PHL did today, which I, again, really appreciated um, if you want to do that or bring, you know, other people's prayers that you've read that you'd like to read or prayer requests as uh, Ella did, right, you know, for people in your life or for yourself. Um, and that will always basically be the format. So thank you so much. God bless. And uh, welcome to the Temple Mount. Welcome to the Church of the Mount. Thank you for being here for the very first fellowship meeting. And I hope that you will have a blessed night and week and year. God bless.